Have you ever wondered how the British royal family came to be? This story doesn't start with a king or a queen, but rather with several kingdoms, each ruled by their own monarch. This was the landscape of Britain during the Anglo-Saxon period, which began in the 5th century. These early monarchies were born out of necessity, as tribes banded together for protection and survival. They were led by chieftains, who over time evolved into kings. But it wasn't until the 9th century, during the reign of Alfred the Great, that we start to see a shift towards a unified England. Alfred, King of Wessex, successfully defended his kingdom against Viking invasions, earning him the title, The Great. But more importantly, his reign marked the start of the English monarchy we are familiar with today. Fast forward to the 11th century and we encounter a pivotal moment in British history, the Norman Conquest. At the helm of this invasion was William the Conqueror, Duke of Normandy. His victory at the Battle of Hastings in 1066 not only secured his place on the English throne, but also marked the end of Anglo-Saxon rule and the beginning of the Norman dynasty. But the monarchy as we know it today didn't just appear overnight. The transition from a feudal rule, where power was divided among various nobles, to a centralized monarchy, where the king held the primary authority, was a gradual process. This shift was driven by a series of reforms implemented by various monarchs over time. These changes aimed to centralize power, establish a uniform system of law and order, and create a more cohesive national identity. The monarchy has continued to evolve over the centuries, adapting to the changing times and playing different roles in the nation's governance. But one thing remains constant. The British monarchy's roots stretch back over a thousand years. So, the British monarchy has roots that stretch back over a thousand years. With a history so long, there are bound to be some fascinating periods. Ever heard of the Tudors and Stuarts? These two dynasties ruled England from the late 15th to the early 18th century, and oh boy, did they leave their mark. Let's start with the Tudors. This was a family that knew how to make an impression. Henry this event kicked things off by winning the War of the Roses, but his son, Henry VIII, took it to another level. If he's remembered for one thing, it's his six wives. But his reign was also a time of massive religious upheaval. He broke with the Catholic Church over his desire to divorce his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, triggering the English Reformation. This was a seismic shift that forever changed the religious landscape of the country. Then there was Queen Elizabeth I, the Virgin Queen. Her reign is known as the Elizabethan era, a golden age of English history. She navigated the treacherous waters of politics and religion with skill and determination, establishing Protestantism in England and defeating the Spanish Armada. But the drama didn't end with the Tudors. Next came the Stuarts. This was a time of great political upheaval and civil war. The monarchy was challenged and for a time abolished. King Charles I was even beheaded. Yet the monarchy was restored under Charles II, known as the Merry Monarch for his love of pleasure and entertainment. These periods were rife with change, from religious reform to political revolution. The Tudor and Stuart reigns saw the monarchy evolve and adapt, sometimes with a heavy hand, other times with a more subtle approach. These were times of great power struggles, religious conflict, and personal drama, all of which shaped the monarchy and helped to define the nation's identity. These were times of great change, laying the foundation for the monarchy we know today. Fast forward a few centuries and we arrive at the modern period, dominated by the House of Windsor. This house, despite its relatively recent establishment in the early 20th century, has witnessed and navigated through some of history's most tumultuous times. First, let's consider Queen Victoria, the grandmother of Europe, whose reign marked the height of the British Empire. Her reign, the longest until Queen Elizabeth II, was marked by significant cultural, political, and industrial change within Britain, and by Britain's expansionist policies abroad. Next, we have King George VI, who was thrust into the role of king after his brother, Edward VIII, abdicated the throne to marry Wallace Simpson, an American divorcee. This abdication crisis shook the monarchy to its core, but George VI navigated the troubled waters with grace. His reign saw Britain through the dark days of World War II, and he became a symbol of resilience and determination for the British people. And then, of course, there's Queen Elizabeth II, the longest reigning monarch in British history. 
Her reign has seen the monarchy adapt to a changing world. She's seen 12 British prime ministers come and go, and has had to navigate the tricky waters of political neutrality while serving as a figurehead for the nation. Under her watch, the monarchy has modernized, becoming more accessible and transparent, yet retaining the allure and mystique that has fascinated the world for centuries. But it hasn't all been smooth sailing. The monarchy has faced its share of controversies and criticisms. Yet, it has shown a remarkable ability to adapt and evolve. It has weathered storms, from the abdication crisis to the death of Princess Diana, and has emerged stronger, more resilient, and more relevant than ever. The Windsors have steered the monarchy through a century of change, They've maintained tradition while embracing progress, proving that the monarchy is not a static institution, but a dynamic and evolving entity. Even in modern times, the monarchy continues to evolve and adapt. So, what does the future hold for the British royal family? As we gaze into the crystal ball of royal succession, two figures stand out prominently. Prince Charles, the current heir apparent, and his son, Prince William, Prince Charles, with his long-standing commitment to environmental causes, stands poised to bring a new perspective to the throne. His reign could see a monarchy increasingly engaged with global issues, from climate change to social justice. Will he reshape the public image of the monarchy, or will he follow in the footsteps of his mother, Queen Elizabeth II, maintaining tradition and continuity? And then there's Prince William, who represents a younger generation. He's grown up in a world vastly different from that of his father and grandmother. His reign could mark a significant shift in the monarchy's approach to its role and responsibilities. Will he usher in a more modern, more accessible monarchy? But the path forward isn't without obstacles. The 21st century presents significant challenges for the monarchy. There's an ongoing debate about the relevance and cost of maintaining a monarchy in a modern democratic society. Some argue that the monarchy is an outdated institution, a relic of a bygone era. Others contend that it provides a sense of stability and continuity, a link to the past that grounds us in our national identity. Moreover, the monarchy must navigate the delicate balance between tradition and modernity. How can it retain its historical significance while adapting to the changing expectations of the public? How can it preserve its mystique while becoming more transparent and accessible? In a rapidly changing world, the role of the monarchy is evolving. It must find ways to remain relevant and meaningful to people's lives. It's an institution steeped in history, yet it must also look to the future, embracing change and innovation. The future of the monarchy is uncertain, but it's sure to be fascinating. As we look ahead, we can't help but wonder, what will the British royal family look like in the years to come? Who will lead it? What will be its place in society? Only time will tell. But one thing is for sure, the story of the monarchy is far from over. It's a story that continues to unfold, capturing our imaginations and sparking endless speculation. So, we've taken a whirlwind tour through over a thousand years of British royal history. We've navigated the murky origins of monarchy, tracing the lineage back to the early medieval period. The rise and fall of powerful dynasties, the intricate web of alliances, and the bloody battles for the throne. It's been quite a journey. We followed the path of the Tudors and Stuarts, who shaped the British Isles and beyond with their rule. We've witnessed the tumultuous reigns, the religious conflicts, and the dawn of a new era in British history. These were the rulers who laid the groundwork for the modern monarchy we're familiar with today. And speaking of the modern monarchy, we've delved into the era of the Windsors. We've seen the transformation of the monarchy under their reign, the trials they've faced, and the adaptations they've made to keep up with the times. Their story is a testament to the resilience and adaptability of the monarchy. We've also speculated about the future of the monarchy, pondering the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. Will the monarchy continue to adapt and evolve, or will it become a relic of the past? Only time will tell. Now why is there such enduring fascination with the British royal family? Perhaps it's the allure of power and prestige, the grandeur of the palaces, or the glamour of royal weddings. Or maybe it's the human drama, the scandals and triumphs, the love stories and tragedies. Whatever the reason, the British royal family continues to captivate audiences worldwide. 
The British royal family isn't just a collection of individuals, but a living, breathing institution. It's a symbol of continuity and tradition, a link to the past, and a beacon for the future. It's a complex tapestry woven with threads of history, drama, and intrigue. The British royal family has a long and storied history, and it's a story that continues to unfold. We hope you've enjoyed this journey through time, and remember, history isn't just about the past, it's about understanding the present and anticipating the future.